Welcome back. In this class, we're going to talk about organic synthesis. So it's just going to be a brief introduction into the arrows that you use, but also where it can come up in the exam. So let's start by looking at what do you actually need to know for your exam? Number one, you need to know the steps involved in a synthesis reaction. So this came up in the 2022 deferred paper where they had to give the two steps involved in a synthesis reaction. Number two, you need to be able to use the curly arrows to describe a mechanism. Now there's two mechanisms on the leave insert course. The first one is free radical substitution or halogenation of alkanes. And the second is for addition reactions. Now the type of arrow that you use for each mechanism is different because of what's happening with the electrons. Number three, you have to be able to look at a chemical reaction and identify which type of reaction is occurring. So is it substitution, is it redox, is it addition or is it elimination and what are the markers for their specific reactions? So organic synthesis. The definition is the process of making organic compounds from simpler starting materials. So in the exam, if you are carrying out a synthesis reaction, so a scientist or a chemical engineer will have a target molecule in mind. So the target molecule is the molecule that they want to make. Now, when a scientist or a chemical engineer is making it or in the process of making a target molecule, usually it can't be done in one step. It usually has to be done with a series of steps. So what they do is they figure out a way to the target molecule, but they do that via a series of intermediates. Now the intermediate compounds, these are the compounds that you form on the way to the target molecule. Next, when a scientist is figuring out what steps are involved in the organic synthesis, the steps that the examiner wants you to note in terms of your exam question is, number one, bonds break in the reactants. So whatever your starting material is, because if those bonds don't break, well then absolutely nothing is going to happen. And then number two, once your bonds have broken in the reactants, then you are able to form product molecules, whether that's your intermediate or your target molecule. And then bonds form in the product. That's all the examiner was looking for when the 2022 deferred paper was bonds breaking the reactants, bonds forming the products. Now, as for the mechanism itself. So with the mechanisms, a mechanism in chemistry is a fancy way of showing what happens to the electrons. So if we are breaking bonds, so if I wanted to go from, say for example, I'm going from an alkene, so C2H4, and I'm reacting that with bromine water, and we form CH2Br and CH2Br. I could have written that as C2H4Br2, but it's not clear what the structure would be. Now, that type of reaction is called an addition reaction. But from when we did, it's the test for unsaturation. So when we were talking about ethene before, ethene has a double bond between the two carbon atoms. It is an unsaturated molecule. Bromine water is B or 2 like that. Now, in order to test for unsaturation, you add bromine water to the, to the gas and you give it a good shake. And if you see a colour change from red to colourless, well then unsaturation is present because the following happens. The pi bond between the two carbon atoms breaks. The sigma bond between the two bromine atoms breaks. One bromine atom adds on to one carbon and the other bromine atom adds on to the other carbon atom. And they can't add on to the same carbon. Now, that is an addition reaction, but what's happening there is you are breaking bonds in the reactants and forming bonds in the product. So it's a synthesis reaction. But what's happening there is you are just rearranging electrons. So when we write a mechanism for this type of reaction, that's all a bond is. When you have your bond between the carbon 
the two carbon atoms, that is just two electrons, one from each carbon. When you have a double bond between the two carbon atoms, that is just two pairs of electrons between the two atoms. So when you are breaking your bond between the two carbons, you break the pi bond, those two electrons just rearrange and help um, to form the new bonds between the carb one of the carbons and the product. Or I'm sorry, one of the carbons and the bromines to form the product. So when bonds break and bonds form, when a chemical reaction happens, you have a rearrangement of electrons. And that's what the mechanism shows. It shows that rearrangement or the movement of the electrons. And to show electrons moving from one place to another, we use arrows or mechanism arrows. Now, depending on how many electrons are moving and how they are rearranging, there's two different types. Right, the first type is when you have an arrow that looks like this. Now, it kind of looks a bit like a half-headed arrow, and it is. So where the arrow starts, that's where your electrons started or where they are coming from. The tip or the point on the arrow, this is where that points at where the electrons move to. Now, on this particular arrow, you only see half of the arrow head. That means specifically the movement of one electron only. This type of arrow is used for a very particular type of reaction and it's used for homolytic fission. The other type of arrow is this one where you have a curly arrow like that, but now on the end of the arrow, you have a double arrow head. Same as before, where the arrow starts, that's where your electrons started from. Where the arrow points to, that's where your electrons move to. And now with this one, you have one, two sides on that arrow head. That means you are dealing with two electrons. Now the type of reaction where you will see this arrow is when you have heterolytic fission. Now we've two different mechanisms that we have to study at leave insert level and it's actually one of each. When you have free radical substitution, that is actually homolytic fission. I'm just gonna move this up a tiny bit. So free radical substitution. is going to use the half-headed arrows. Whereas the second type of reaction is an addition reaction. And that one, we will see the double-headed arrow, okay? So they're the two different types of arrows that we will see now. We won't actually get to use them in this class. I'll show you how to use them in a separate video on how the mechanisms actually work. Now the summary table of the types of reactions. So there's four different types of reactions that you have to be able to identify at leave insert level. And the four of them are shown in the summary table. Now this summary table is basically a cheat guide for when you're looking at a reaction, how do you figure out what the type is? Now you're not going to use the language here in the exam. So if you're asked to explain, how do you know it's an addition reaction? You're not going to say, well, you started with two things and you ended up with one. Instead, you're going to use language like, you had an unsaturated reactant reacting with a molecule and that molecule added onto the unsaturated compound or something like that. There is actually a specific definition for it. So the language that you see here, this is how you look at a reaction and just go, that's an addition reaction based on what you see. And that is actually something that does come up in the exam and you're looking at a minimum of three marks here. So the first type is substitution. So this is where you start with two molecules and you end up with two molecules. You have the same number of molecules on each side of the equation. They have just rearranged or they are just attached differently. Another one, an addition reaction. So addition, two things add together to form one product. That's addition. 
Elimination is the opposite of addition. So if you remember what an addition reaction is, elimination is the exact opposite. Where you start with one thing and you end up with two. You have eliminated something from the molecule. Now a redox reaction, this is very common on the exam. This is where something is either losing or gaining oxygen or technically hydrogen. Now of those four different types, the most important one that you are definitely going to see on your exam is addition. That usually comes up in question eight and it's a minimum of six marks. The second most important one is redox. However, you do need to be able to identify all four of the different types of reactions just in case. So underneath, I'm going to give you a specific reaction. If I start off with CH3COOH and I react it with CH3 CH2OH. And what am I going to form here? So let's look at it. You have COOH, that's a carboxylic acid, and you have one, two carbon atoms, so it's ethanoic acid. You have an OH group, so it's an alcohol, and you have one, two carbons. So that is ethanoic acid reacts with ethanol and it forms an ester. Alcohol plus carboxylic acid forms an ester. Now the formula of my ester, we have CH3COO, and then I have CH2CH3, so it's ethyl ethanoate plus water. Now, Based on the number of reactants, so you have two reactants on the left hand side, and on the right hand side, you have two products. So you have the same number of reactants and the same number of products, they are just arranged differently. Therefore, when you form an ester, this type of reaction, yes, it is called esterification, but it is a substitution reaction. The the type of substitution reaction is esterification because you're forming an ester. Now, if it was something like this, which is a different reaction. So if I start off with C2H4 plus BOR2 and I form CH2BOR, CH2BOR, this is different. So you have two reactants on the left hand side and they are adding together to form one product. This type of reaction is an addition reaction. Now one of the key features of an addition reaction is actually this. One of your reactants is unsaturated. If it was the opposite, so if I was to take If I took C2H6 and I form C2H4 plus H2, this is the exact opposite where you have one reactant and that is kicking something off of itself and now you have two products. So that is an elimination reaction. It's the exact opposite of addition. With an elimination reaction, you are forming something that is unsaturated. Whereas with an addition reaction, you are starting with something that is unsaturated. Then for redox, the main redox reactions that you need to be able to identify is actually in terms of alcohols. So if I start with a primary alcohol like this, which is ethanol, you expose it to a weak oxidizing agent like acidified potassium permanganate. The first product it will form is the aldehyde. And it kicks off hydrogen from the structure. Where the hydrogen comes from is this carbon here will form a double bond with that oxygen. When that bond forms, that hydrogen has to be eliminated or kicked off of the oxygen. But to form a double bond between the carbon and the oxygen, one of the hydrogens on the carbon also has to be kicked off. And that's where the H2 comes from. Now, if you have your oxidizing agent is in excess, well then your aldehyde will oxidize even further to the carboxylic acid, like that. Now, there we go.
Now, that is basically your summary of the four different types of reactions. Now, the next few videos are going to be spent looking at these types of reactions and how do you pick them out? What is the key information from each of them? So basically, in summary from this, can you identify the type of reaction based on these generic phrases? And what are the steps involved in organic synthesis, bond break in the, in the reactants and bonds form in the product?